I'm moving down onto this little squirrel's leg and I'm going to start with a, a base layer down on his leg. I've got a tiny little uh, warm grey wand so it needs to go into a pencil extender and I'm going to bring some base layer down onto this leg. One thing I do want to do is just divide because that's the that's sort of the top of the leg there. That's actually above that is actually the um, the body. So I'll put a bit of I'd left that as part of the leg, but that's actually the body. I'll get a bit of texture into that. But let's bring this this base layer around onto this leg. I've got my little bit of glassine paper down to protect the paper from any oils in my hands but you could use any any bit of paper whether that's just printer paper tracing paper the reason I like the glassine paper is because it's you can see there it's sort of semi uh, transparent and you can see through it um, which means I can put it over my work and I can still see through it but you know uh, printer paper will work just as well if you don't want or don't have the glassine paper or tracing paper. The other reason that the glass, I do like the glassing paper is because it has no, it's so smooth there's no friction on it at all so as I bring it over my uh, project um, it doesn't sort of catch, doesn't catch any of the pigment, doesn't smudge because there's just no, uh, there's no texture on the, on the paper, on the glassing paper. I'm going to work on the whole sort of area of the leg in one go really. So I'm going to bring the the base layer all the way down just sort of roughly coming over in the direction that the the fur is going to go in and bring that round and down onto the bottom. There we go. So we've pretty much got his, his legs sort of plotted in with the base layer and I've just got a nice even coverage over the over the area so I always want to uh, work from light to dark so I've got the base layer down and now I'm looking for other sort of light colors that are in this area and I can see all the way down the front down here I can see sort of a creamy sandy color so I'm going in with the brown ochre 10% and I'm going to pop some in on that front corner there for that front edge of that leg and then I'm going to take the burnt ochre from the polychromos range and very lightly bring a little bit of this colour down this front edge as well so particularly on the bottom area down here it sort of goes a little bit more uh, brown but I'm not pressing on hard I just want to just tint the paper with this colour Bring a bit down the edge of that leg and then this comes out into the arms. And I find it quite useful to work on the area all in one go. Just so that I don't have to keep picking pencils up and down. I can just, uh, yeah, I can work on it all in one go so I can sort of get the flow of the pencil. I can um, look to see the areas that need a particular colour whilst I've got that colour in my hand so I don't have to keep picking pencils up and down and that just works for me um, doesn't work for everybody some people like to uh, you know work on smaller areas at a time but it works quite nicely for me and I quite enjoy um, just sort of working on a larger area especially when I'm sort of creating longer fur like this um, it's quite nice to work on a a longer a larger area I'm going to take the sanguine that I've used throughout most of this uh, little squirrel and I'm just looking for just a tint just a tint on the the paper nothing nothing sort of heavier than that working up through the colors from light to dark very gently no pressure at all on the 
uh, the pencil. Yeah, I've got that chisel tip that I often talk about so that it's just giving me a nice uh, even coverage, nice and smooth coverage. In this area here, I can, even though it's grey, I can see some slight sort of purple lilac tones. So I'm going in with a bit of the violet grey from the luminance and I just want to tint this area down here. So we're not looking at texture at the minute, we're still sort of building up under layers. And just bringing that dusting of this in. It really is a really light sort of coverage. You can see a lot of the base layer, a lot of that warm grey one coming through underneath. And that's fine, that's what I want. I want this to just sort of hit and miss the grain. I want it to be really soft coverage so that when it's finished, you can see a slight sort of hint of the lilac colour but that it's not going to take over. So we'll just build this in around here really gently. And this whole sort of squirrel has been built up quite gently with, you know, lots of layers. I don't want to go in with um, harsh layers too fast. I don't want to sort of press on too hard. I just want to build it up gently because there's lots of colours that have gone into this. And then I'm going to take the cold grey one from the polychromos and just blend that violet grey. I'm going to blend this bit down the front with the buff titanium where I put the burnt ochre. And I'm going to use a little bit of the silver grey from the luminance to blend out over this side. I'm going to go in with a little bit of the nugget and start to bring a bit of texture into this leg, into the fur in this leg. So I'm just sort of coming down roughly in the direction that the fur is going to come down the leg in. I'll bring this uh, nugget down it sort of starts to get a little bit dark here and then we obviously have the light bit on the front so I'm going to leave that light bit on the front for the minute but I am going to bring some of this nugget into this darker area and I'm just sort of working backwards and forwards with uh, the pencil strokes holding my pencil quite far back and just plotting in some of this this brown with this nugget and I'm going to take I'm going to take the nugget and I'm going to draw pretty much a straight line across there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill all this in quite sort of dark and the reason that I'm going to do that is so that I remind myself and I don't forget that this is a surface that he's sitting on. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to plot that in now and then I can darken that down later. But I just want to not forget that that is a, a sort of a flat surface. I don't want to be bringing lots of fur out over that because that is that is the flat surface that the squirrel's sitting on. So that's got to stay quite sort of level. So I've added the nugget and I'm just blending some of that together to just soften that down a little bit. And then we're going to take a, a warm grey four and very gently bring some of this texture down this leg. I don't want to fill all of this area in. I want these other layers that we've put underneath to show through. But I want to start to think about shaping 
this leg so it's obviously coming over this way on this side I'm going to bring it down this side a little bit of texture there to just show the fur coming over the the leg so I'm just going to uh, over this leg here so I'm just going to pop that in almost sort of, sort of sits behind the leg there and just do these backwards and forwards straight. You know, it may be like a little V shape, and they may just be little lines. The reason I go backwards and forwards is because I want the wispy bits to sometimes go up, and then I sometimes want the wispy bits to go down. And that then creates the, the wisps in the fur. So it sometimes um, I'm creating the sort of wispy bits that go under the fur, so the bits that go up, and then I'm perhaps creating the wisps that come down. And that's why I want the the little bit that flicks off when your pencil sort of comes off a page and flicks up you get these little wispy bits and I want them to go both ways and that's going to give me much more realistic fur and much more natural fur I don't necessarily uh, just want to create lots of parallel lines all coming down the one uh, direction I want them to be sort of natural and Quite random and I find creating fur like this I actually find the the more sort of random you are so you hold your your pencil back and just sort of go with it without thinking about it too much the more uh, random and realistic you uh, create the pencil stroke so you don't want to think about it too much you just want to sort of you know let the the pencil dance around the paper a little bit but I'm looking at the reference photograph like every few seconds really, just looking for where these darker patches are. So I sort of bring my eyes down to the, the project and then up to the uh, reference photograph and then back down really and it just means I don't really have to stop too much with the pencil because once you've got the flow going of this fur, um, just want to keep it going really I don't really want to stop it when you stop it and start it you sort of have to get your pencil back into the flow at least I do I have to get my pencil sort of back into that flow again and um, it takes a couple of pencil strokes to sort of get it going again I'm gonna go back in with the burnt ochre over this side to just tint this side over here a little bit I'm going to blend again and I'm going to blend with the warm grey 2 over this side and blending is quite important because it brings your colours together underneath, it brings all those layers together that you have um, put underneath. I'm just switching to the pink white actually down here now. It, so it brings all your layers together, so all of those uh, layers that you've put down of different colours and all that effort that you've put down into sort of building up colours, the blending layer then brings all that together and, and that's what you want because you want to bring uh, those colours together but it also acts as a way of pushing the pencils around and pushing them into that tooth of that paper which means you fill that grain in or you, st you start to fill that grain in and that is what gives you a nice smooth surface and something that sort of looks finished rather than very grainy at the end. I mean, so, you know, if, if grain's what you uh, want, well then, you know, that's fine. I mean, sometimes it, it's actually quite helpful to have the grain th showing through. So I'm not saying that's the same for every project. But on the whole, if you want to sort of fill your grain in, then blending is going to be calm, um, you know something that you're going to find really sort of useful if that's what you want to do uh, blending's really useful at uh, filling in the grain and at the same time bringing those colors bringing those layers together 
So I'm going to go back in with a cold grey six and over the top of what we've already put down I'll start to pick up little bits to represent these these bits that are sort of deep down in the in the coat. I don't want to put this everywhere. I want to use this more sparingly than I've used the colours underneath in the previous layers. I just want to pick up some of these darker areas to give this this whole coat area some depth and it's the darker the darker colors that are going to do this i don't want to press on hard and because i've got quite a few layers down now in here um, my pencils the the paper sort of becomes more like an ice rink and the the pencils start to uh, sort of glide over and it becomes uh, quite a nice sort of surface to uh, work on because it becomes smoother so it's actually quite dark in places so I'm just building that up with the the cold grey six and then pop in a little bit of this burnt umber on to just blend this out in places that I can see has got a little bit of this tint of colour up here and this has got more of the, the, the sanguine colour, the sort of more orangey colours down here. So let me just tint this down here. And I'm not too worried about the bottom because I shall sort that out when I do that, that bottom bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of the burnt sienna on this side. It's definitely a bit sort of more pink. And I'm just blending with it really. I'm just sort of adding the, uh, the tint to the paper whilst I'm blending. I'm going to use the brown ochre 50% down here to blend this out. I want to use this kneadable eraser that I showed you um, when I was doing the tail and just bring some extra little bits of fur texture over this way. We'll blend those over with a bit of the pink white and a little bit of the dark flesh 40% to just bring that over this way and tone those in a little bit and I'm going to use the dark sepia to bring in some darker areas to again just, I'm looking for those darker bits that are sort of deep down in the the fur. So I've added quite a bit of the base in with um, the, the the darker and the lighter pencils, and I just want to bring a little bit of texture over the top. with the slice tool, bringing bits off in different directions. I am looking at the looking at the reference photograph to see how this texture comes across. So I'm holding it like a pen and because I've got all the base layers down on the Fabriano Artistico I can just bring some texture in, bring a few little bits of uh, wavy hairs, a few stray hairs that are going off in different directions. So whilst I'm here what I'm going to do is take a very sharp cold grey six and just draw in very finely some whisker lines. I 
have a couple that is going out that way. A couple going that way. There are some little marks in here. I will pop those in. It does take a little bit of practice. So if you're not that sort of comfortable with putting uh, the whiskers in them, perhaps just have a little practice on a piece of scrap paper before you uh, draw the whiskers in. But what I want to do is take the, the black lines Or so far so let's take it into that one that I've just popped in with a slice tool a uh, couple of little bits there a couple of little whiskers there and on a couple of the whiskers what I'm going to do is carry on so here for instance I'm going to carry on that whisker that I've put in carry it on with a slice tool so I've gone from the black bit into or the cold grey bit, not the black bit, into the whisker. And I'm going to do that with that, that one as well. So I'm going to carry it on. Because it goes from black to white, so we carry the whiskers on there. A couple of lighter sort of whiskers coming around here and around here and they're really sort of thin whiskers so I'm using the uh, slice tool to put those in I'm going to take the the dark flesh and just put a couple of pores at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the whiskers where the whiskers stops a couple of pores there and take the slice tool to just add a couple more little whiskers in here and just take a couple of whiskers around here as well I know I haven't finished these hands but as I'm working on them now take a couple of whiskers and then also we've got a couple of whiskers that go off this way so let's just Pop those in and then we've got some that sort of go up that way the really sharp pencil that's the key for the whiskers a sharp pencil and almost no pressure so let's just take these off here so I'm using a warm grey four on this side just not quite so not quite so light and a couple of little whiskers around there and then just to soften those a little bit what I'm going to do is take my kneadable eraser and just dab onto those that are on the raw paper and that will just soften them down even more and get rid of those bits so to do this uh, texture on the leg. It's a slightly different sort of way that I'm using the slice tool. I'm sort of using it on the side on the back bit. So on the whiskers I was sort of coming down in straight line but here because it's quite a wiry sort of texture I'm almost sort of doing like uh, dashes with it coming down coming down along the same line but letting it hit and miss a little bit more and that way and you can get some nice effects if you sort of let the the blade of the slice tool sort of bounce on the paper a little bit. You can get some some quite nice effects in texture. And then I'm going to take the white from the Pablo and just pick up on a couple of those. Not necessarily all of them. Pick up on a couple of the larger ones and just blend those a little bit. And just work under a couple of them. Just put a little bit of 
colour under a couple of them to just make a couple of them stand out, not too much, just a couple. And that's pretty much it for this leg. I'll probably just have another look and work in a little bit more texture as the once the camera's gone off. But that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll just carry on with the same sort of uh, techniques, just sort of picking up uh, colours um, a little bit to add a bit more texture. And obviously putting the, the, the darker bit down the bottom for the shadow. Uh, but that's pretty much the texture, that's, that's this leg uh, done. So all we've got left to do is his arms and his, uh, his foot. We'll leave this video here for now. So I hope you've enjoyed this part of the tutorial. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.